Hi. Today we're going to discuss what is the most important part of an electric guitar for its tone. Uh, as, as many of you know, this is not an uncontroversial topic. When I browse through forums on the internet, I, I can see that there is there is no uh, real consensus about this uh, in the general public. But uh, Luthiers seems to uh, agree on this question, but more about that later. So today we're going to have a general discussion about uh, how parts contribute to, to tone. Uh, and then in coming clips I'm going to exchange one part, say, say a mi microphone, and then compare the, the, the guitar back to back with, with two different microphones. And, it, and it's obvious that, uh, that the humbucker and the single coil uh, has different sounds and it's and it's obvious that uh, if you have an overwound pickup it's going to be hotter and darker and and so on so that that has an uh, has a great uh, influence on tone uh, but but that that is not necessarily what sets great guitars apart from uh, average guitars uh, that is not the uh, the thing that is the most difficult to achieve and we'll make such back to back comparisons of the uh, of the rest of the parts of the guitar as well. But now let's uh, let's uh, discuss the, the general function of an electric guitar. So let's pluck a fretted note. Then it's fixated here at the bridge and here at that fret. So the vibrational energy from the string goes down into the wood at these two places. Now for an acoustic guitar, uh, I bet you've seen the uh, Kladni patterns, you know when you pluck a string and you excite uh, the top lid of the guitar with some frequency, it's going to start vibrate, but different uh, areas of the top lid vibrates for different frequencies and you have nodal lines where it's no vibration. So for an acoustic guitar the top lid is supposed to vibrate, the string supposed to uh, set the top lid into, uh, into motion uh, and that in turn will work as a speaker. And the Kladni patterns shows, shows us which areas of the guitar that, that are, are more prone to, to uh, transmit certain frequencies. Electric guitars are, are based on a different principle. Here um, the, the sound isn't transmitted acoustically from the, from the body. It is instead uh, electrical induction. The string vibrates and the, uh, the pickup induces a current which, which goes to the amp. So the bridge can basically be considered fixed in an electric guitar. Actually, uh, it's uh, according to uh, Dr. Fleischer of, of Munich, uh, I have a reference in, in the uh, video description to his paper. Uh, you get more vibration into the body of the guitar from the strings via the neck and into the body than directly from the bridge and the strings. So if you want the strings to ring totally unimpeded, someone uh, may, may suggest that uh, why, why don't you use, uh, make the guitar infinitely rigid kind of make it out of, uh, of solid steel. Uh, th that would give a good sustain, but, but it would give a very harsh tone, uh, rather uncomplex tone, with just information from the string. And uh, since the, since the uh, metal isn't set into motion and, and doesn't feed back any energy to the strings, it would be uncomplex. And it would be, uh, it would be too bright with such, such, a, such a material. So we actually want the neck to vibrate. Uh, when we pluck a string like this, it will uh, set off some vibrations in the, uh, in the neck. And uh, depending on which the resonant frequencies are, it's going to feed back vibrations to the string of those resonant frequencies. So if, uh, if I pluck this frequency, 
and the resonant frequency at this point of the neck is exactly the same. It's going to cancel out the stream. And you, you, uh, it's, uh, it's going to be dampened by that. And if I uh, pluck this string and uh, the resonant frequencies at this point is very far away from what the guitar is supposed to uh, produce at this string in this fret, well then, then uh, no, no vibration will be set off in the neck and nothing will be fed back to the string and you, you won't uh, get the complex tone there. So we want something in between there. You can check out the homepage of uh, Fredua Guitars. Uh, they have a Craftpedia that is so generous with information that I, I hardly believed it when I, when I saw it. So, so check that out. I, I, there are links in the, uh, in the video description to that. But this, but this was just one note, this one. But uh, the, the guitar is uh, a full fretboard and six strings worth of combinations. Uh, you can see the frequencies in the, in the picture here. Um, for all those positions, this, the, the, wooden, the wooden plate out of which you make uh, the neck needs to have uh, nodes and antinodes in such a pattern that supports uh, the frequencies you're, you're going to try to play here. And as I described earlier, here for instance, you want the neck to feed back at this point a frequency that is close, but not on this frequency. And the same here, and here, and here. So, so that's, uh, I, I bet you've seen uh, when, uh, when Luthiers holds up uh, uh, a neck and taps it, listens to it, listens to it at different places. So certain notes ring more clearly at different places. And, and they use that as a diagnostic test to see if the, uh, the wood is, is uh, suitable to, to build a guitar out of. So if you have a fretboard from uh, about 1000 Hz fundamental plus overtones to uh, 82 Hz fundamental plus overtones and you want for all notes you fret here the neck to vibrate with not exactly the same frequency but a frequency rather, rather close to that. So you want it to have such resonant frequencies. In the study I referred to earlier by Dr. Helmut Fleischer, uh, he measured the uh, dead points of the neck of uh, a Stratocaster using laser. So I think it would be very interesting if, if, uh, if you actually could uh, create a technical laser-based uh, uh, method for uh, determining uh, uh, which necks that are, are suitable for a certain guitar. Um, maybe that exists. Maybe some of you know about that. Uh, and such a measurement could probably also give us a, a definition uh, which could be vis visualized how, how a, an optimal neck would look like. So what do you think about that? And I, I would really would like to hear your feedback about that. All right, so in the uh, upcoming clips I'm going to go through the parts of uh, an electric guitar, switch them out one by one and have A-B comparisons, back-to-back -back comparisons. So then we will see experimentally, uh, for instance, for, for bodies, we, we can use strats and, and, and uh, shift the entire body uh, and have back-to-back -back comparisons about that too. When it comes to strings and, and, and pickups and uh, bridge and uh, nuts and, and all that, then it's that's obviously a whole lot easier. And when it comes to the neck, which arguably is the most important part, on the electric guitar, I'm going to contact Chalmers University of Technology, which is uh, which is located here in Gothenburg, where I live, and and uh, 
and see if, if they, they have any research on this and, and if they have the, uh, the measurement uh, tools used by Helmut, Dr. Helmut Fleischer in, in, uh, in his work. And maybe we could, uh, we could um, see if we can uh, uh, measure a bunch of, of necks um, and maybe be able to visualize what, what a, a good neck would look like in a way that it, it can be uh, understood and, and, and discussed. All right, now I, know, I want to know what you think. Uh, as I said in the beginning, this is an uncontroversial, this is not an uncontroversial topic. So don't hold back. If you think any of this is, was total crap, let me know. Cheers.